for ordinance to rezone two parcels of property. These are located at 301 West Church Street. TMS number 005920-005-004 and 305 West Church Street. TMS number 005920-05-001 from R3 multifamily residential to C2 office and institutional commercial. Is there anyone who would like to speak from the public on this public hearing at this time? Okay, if there is no one, I will close the public hearing uh, for the ordinance to rezone the two parcels of property located 301 West Church Street and 305 West Church Street. And at this time, uh, I'll call our regular council meeting to order. Um, welcome everyone. It is October the 12th, 7 p.m. at the beautiful Town Hall Complex in Batesburg, Leesville, South Carolina. If I could, Kim Suits, if you would come and give our invitation, please. Before my prayer, I'd like to read from Philippians chapter 4, starting in verse 4. It says this, Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say, rejoice. Let your reasonableness be known to everyone. The Lord is at hand. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally then, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things, what you have learned and received and heard and seen. Practice these things, and the God of peace will be with you. Let's pray. God, we praise you and we thank you that you are a God of peace. That in seeking peace with those who rebelled against you, you sent your own son to make a way that we could be reconciled with you. And we thank you that the same God of peace can and will grant peace and reconciliation to those who seek it through you. And so we do pray. We pray for this town council. We pray for this town that we would be seeking you in prayer, that we would let our request be known to you, that we would not be anxious about anything, but that we would come to you seeking you for peace. Lord, we pray that we would think of things that are honorable, that are just, that are pure, that are lovely, that are commendable, that are excellent. We pray that you would grant this to us and enable us to do that by your grace. We pray all these in Jesus' name and for your glory. Amen. 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 Mr. Cameron, if you would lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Item 4 on the agenda, approval of the agenda. Do I have a motion to approve? So Mr. Frost, got a second? Second. Mr. Wise, any discussion? Yes. District 1? Yes. District 2? Yes. District 4? Yes. District 5? Yes. District 6? Yes. District 7? Yes. District 8? Yes. And I vote yes. The agenda has been approved. Adoption of the minutes, item 5, for the regular council meeting of September 14th, 2020. Do I have a motion to approve? So moved. Mr. Second. Brill, second by Mr. Hall. Any discussion? District 1? Yes. District 2? Yes. District 3? Yes. District 4? Yes. District 5? Yes. District 6? Yes. District 7? Yes. District 8? Yes. And I have a, yes, the minutes for the regular council meeting of September 14th, 2020 have been adopted. 
Item 6, Mayor's Report. Our next regular council meeting will be November the 9th, 2020. Uh, council Committee reports, uh, Central Midlands COG, Council Member Hall. COG had a uh, Zoom meeting on Thursday, September 24th. Actually, we adopted all of the items that were on the August meeting for which there was not a quorum. The financial statement for COG, the annual budget was 13600000 and they are currently at $14,193,000 in expenditures. But it's a little misleading because of contract services for aging and Midlands workforce is about $1.8 million over budget. As stated in the August meeting, the majority of the consent agenda was to transfer funds to the Comet system. The regular items which were budgeting of additional funds for consultant services to solicit more public involvement, they're spending $60,000 to encourage people to attend meetings. And verbal report indicated that person and translator services, $30,000 to translators. The verbal report indicated that persons using more than 20 different languages reside within the COG. That's it. Thanks, sir. <laughs> Number two, Environmental Planning Advisory Committee, Council Member Prouts. Uh, EPAC did not meet in the month of September. Our next meeting is scheduled for next Wednesday, October 21st. Thanks, sir. And item three, the Common Advisory Committee, Council Member Kane. Common constantly meets. Huh. We meet. Um, I've been appointed to the Finance Committee for uh, for Common, and at some point I want to uh, make sure that we have a, a work session so that we have made a commitment, and I said last uh, last Council meeting that I remember uh, myself and Pansy Bazaar and uh, quite a few other folks, we did a lot of surveying of bus routes, and the bus system is needed in Batesburg, Leesville. I'd like to see a couple of dedicated uh, lines going to uh, Midlands Technical College, Lexington Medical Center, and to uh, Mission. Um, so, but council, the thing that happened prior was that we did a lot of work and a lot of studies, but council never put the financial commitment behind the bus system. And so it sat in the town hall for all years until uh, I think Teddy, I don't know how you brought that back up, but in some way we, we have to, um, uh, as a part of making our community uh, more accessible, and more modern, we have to have a solid um, bus system uh, in town. So uh, I ask council to be thinking be much prayer about uh, how we uh, move forward with the comment. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Kane. Joint Municipal Water and Sewer did not meet. The next meeting is uh, Wednesday the 14th. Chamber of Commerce update. Uh, President Mike Taylor, if you would please. Thank you. Uh, thank you for the the Chamber of Commerce and Business and held two events that have been postponed in the past due to COVID-19. The first was a golf tournament from the uh, uh, Pope Festival. was scheduled for September the 18th and then reinforced it to the 25th and we held it the 25th with some money. So we, we were able to hold that. Then we had our um, annual auction that was scheduled for August 22nd uh, and was moved to October the 8th. And uh, I'm most appreciative of the community for their support and we appreciate those of you who attended the uh, auction the other night. On the table was brought to the Midlands by Central Carolina Community Foundation in 2019 because they believe it takes all of us to build a strong community. They feel that each voice in our community matters and that people who feel connected are happier citizens who make their communities better. I was fortunate to be involved with one in Lexington um, last year, and I was asked to host one in Bexburg Visual this year. I did so on Tuesday, and it was a cross-section of the community. Uh, so you will know some of the questions that were asked. This is just a few of them. What would you say if you were bragging about this area? What do we do well? How can we use those things to strengthen our community? What are your hopes for our community now in the long term? What are the top needs of our community? How can we individually or collectively address those needs? 
how can you how can we use these conversations to bring uh, colleagues, friends, and neighbors together to lead change and create a more livable, equitable, and just region. The people that attended that, it was a good cross-section, really enjoyed it and wanted to meet further. So I was real happy with that and hopefully from that some committees and things will be formed out of that. Uh, Lexington County, as I saw that it's on uh, the manager's report, um, but Lexington County has begun a comprehensive planning process across the uh, county. Citizens will be able to take a survey and attend a Zoom meeting. Um, uh, they all begin October 19th and go through the 22nd. They're broken into seven areas. We are in area seven. You have a sheet there, and for those in the uh, audience, there's some over there where you can go uh, and catch the Zoom meeting about our area. If you travel through some of the other areas, you can attend those too, uh, but you have to register for them. You will also have an opportunity to uh, fill out a survey. Um, some numbers that I became aware of today that I thought might, you might find interesting. Lexington County EMS responded to and transported 8,528 calls from January to uh, September this year in an area west of Long Pond Road and south of Highway 378 in the southwest portion of Lexington County. Those figures were gathered, I think, to to uh, communicate to Lexington Medical Center the need for something to be a little bit closer to this area. I thought that was interesting. And finally, just some more numbers. As you well know, I'm kind of reporting on COVID uh, for 2000, I'm sorry, 29054, 29070, and 29006. If you remember back in April, they were around 12 to 15. In June, it jumped up between 40 and 60. Uh, in July, they jumped up to 160. For those, they dropped back down to about 40. Now they're up about 70. So they start to grow back up. That's my report. Any questions? Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mike. Ms. Judy, do we have anything from the public comments? Moving to unfinished business. Second reading, ordinance to rezone two parcels of property located at 301 West Church, excuse me, West Church Street. Um, and 305 West Church Street from R3 Multifamily Residential to C2 Office and Institutional Commercial. Do I have a motion to approve? Second reading. So moved. Mr. Prowse, do I have a second? Second. Second. I missed that. Thank you. And any discussion? I have a question. Have we determined what's going to be located at the have we determined what's going to be located uh, at that property at this time? Basically, they anticipate putting a nail shop, a nail salon. And both pieces of both houses, two nail salons? Just the one. Just the one. Currently they have two nail salons, but they're at different locations, but they keep the same books. They keep one set of books for both of them. It's one business with two locations. So Thank you. it would be one business Thank with you. two locations. <clears throat> Any other discussion? District 1? Yes. District 2? Yes. District 3? District 3 goes no. District 4? Yes. District 5? Yes. District 6? Yes. District 7? Yes. District 8? No. And I vote yes, second reading has passed. New business number nine, first reading an ordinance to rezone a parcel of property located along West Columbia Avenue. TMS number 007025-01-002 from R3 Multifamily Residential to C2 Office and Institutional Commercial. Do I have a motion to approve first reading? So moved. Mr. Prowse, do I have a second? Second. Second by Mr. Hall. Any discussion? Mr. Mayor, I do have a 
it's your night. And I'd hate to keep beating that, uh, that dead horse, but we are constantly rezoning. And I, uh, I think Pat has uh, learned me not to use the word spot zone, but we do a lot of rezoning. And so uh, at some point, I think that the planning commission and the council, we all need to get together and kind of maybe revisit what we want the town to look like and where we want um, residential growth to come, where we want um, business growth to come. Because it seems like every other month we are rezoning one or two uh, properties. So, I'm sorry, Pat. Go ahead. That's okay. Well, basically, to address that particular issue, the town of Expert Regional is growing. And I think if you were to make contact with Lexington, Columbia, Aiken, and a lot of other municipalities, they actually have rezoning requests that comes forth every month. And I would um, assume that that's the reason why the Planning Commission in the, their bylaws, they have a set date every month, the third Monday of every month, for set, set aside for anything that would come before the Planning Commission. Typically what comes before the Planning Commission are rezoning requests. We will have a meeting next Monday for another rezoning. <clears throat> so I guess what Baseburg Leesville is basically doing is catching up with the norm because the Board of Appeals meets as needed, but the Planning Commission does have a scheduled date for every month. So other municipalities actually, council has to address a rezoning every month. So we're just basically catching up to the norm. You know, one, one of the things that, um, Mr. Mayor, one, one of the things that um, what I'm concerned about though is like, when you have Dollar General jumping all over town, you know, and we have big boxes now that are empty. We have some boxes, uh, boxes that have been empty for 15 years. And so, and not so much that I don't want the Planning Commission to do its job, but I also want to see uh, leadership from the council and uh, from the chamber, Mike, where we um, look at, because one thing that we are growing in is businesses. I mean, restaurants to be specific. I mean, Baseburg is really an open air food court, basically. Mm -hmm. But as far as, you know, uh, homes where people actually live, work, and play, we're not doing so well on that. You know, we and, and when we really look at, like, um, the Burger King moved from one side of town to the other side of town, and now it's closed, right? So you, you, you add a business and then you kind of subtract the business. So net net, we we really probably not growing as as, as much as we uh, uh, want to put that that positive spin on on growth. So, but I'd like to see uh, mayor, council, the planning committee, the commission, and uh, the chamber with some other maybe concerned citizens sit down and really look at where we want to have houses, where we want to have uh, new jobs, and then where we want to have uh, these businesses that are, I mean, because really, they're not doing anything but moving around the town. So, I mean, and that's not you. The, yeah. the buildings you all may want to, I see where Lexington, if landlords with commercial has vacant businesses, I think it's a minor fee. But if you have a business that's meant a building that's sitting vacant, they have to pay a monthly fee. Right. So you don't just have a building that's sitting there vacant and it's just sitting there vacant. You are actually drawing some type of income from the property owner, in which I'm quite sure that would probably gear them to get the property rented out quicker instead of just letting it sit because it's vacant, they're just going to be giving you money anyway. Right. And with the plan that you're speaking of, um, we hope to have that scheduled soon, of course, with COVID-19. That put a delay on the master plan. 
but the request that's coming forward, we're in the process of getting the zoning map updated so that what we have posted in the office and online is brought current. And such as this particular request, the school district had a parcel, did not realize that the district office actually consists of two different parcels. There's a parcel that the building is on, and then there's a really small parcel that's just, just a portion, a fraction of the parking lot. But back in 2017, whenever Ms. Shelly Davis had her property rezoned to put in the testing, the school district, the portion that has the building was included, but this small portion, and you all probably have a sketch of it in your packet, was just inadvertently left out so that their property would have the same zoning. That's what this request is based upon, and it is contiguous to the other property. Thank you. Any other questions? Thank you, uh, Mayor. Mr. King. Uh, Ted, one thing that we can look at, and other municipalities do this, is buying the boxes, buying, buying the real estate, and then repurposing the real estate, selling it back. But that way we control what is actually coming and what's happening in, um, in, in the community, how you develop it. Now, Hilton Head does that, as does um, um, Greenville. And that way you have a little bit more control of what new businesses are coming and how you develop a town that is um, family friendly, biking, walking friendly, and how you really kind of grow into a town. But that's something totally different. Back. Yeah, we're kind of going to just gently nudge us back to the agenda item. Um, any other questions on the ordinance to rezone this parcel from R3 to uh, C2? Okay, District 1? Yes. District 2? Yes. District 3? District 3 votes, yes. District 4? Yes. District 5? Yes. District 6? Yes. District 7? Yes. District 8? Yes. And I vote yes. The first reading of ordinance to rezone the parcel property locating along West Columbia Avenue from R3 to R2 C2. Um, first reading has been approved. Thank you. New business continued. Approval of funds for the purchase of floating aeration equipment related to CB, CDBG funded wastewater treatment plant improvements. Um, information was in our packet. Do I have a motion? So moved. Uh, motion to purchase by Mr. Gambrell. Second. Thank you, sir. Second by Mr. Wise. Any discussion? I have a Mr. question, Mr. Mr. Mayor. Oh, Mr. King, did you want to speak first? I didn't hear you first. Mr. Hall. Uh, I understand that we're dealing with a um, CBG fund, CBG funds for three hundred ninety-five thousand dollars, but we do not know the total cost of this project. Yes. Plans are now being permitted for construction, and we hope to advertise it week after next. To put it on. Yeah, can you speak, please, on the mic? Uh, plans are DHEC. should go DHEC probably first of next week for that thing to be permitted. DHEC is based on the issues we have with our aeration basins that are proposed to expedite that, that set of plans for construction. And um, we hope those plans go next week. We're going to advertise for 30 days that project and a screw pump and filter press project that's ongoing that is a rural infrastructure funded project. We're going to advertise those two projects together and hopefully get one contractor to do both. But what we're asking here today is to pre-purchase the aeration basin equipment from basin one so we have it in place and on hand when that contract was selected, which we'll probably hope to bring you guys December, we hope. I, I understand that, and I see that with the other pop project, we do have an estimate of about 1.3 million with 800,000 available in funds, but this is an open-ended situation. I, I, we have little or no choice because it is a mandated program, 
but I certainly would like to be dealing with some numbers so that we actually can have a reasonable look at what our financial situation is. I understand that, you know, we deal with big numbers of million five as a bank account, but we're looking at 500,000 of that being allocated to the next project, maybe 200,000 to this project. So that number diminishes and we don't have a long range financial we program. Do you have an engineering estimate on construction costs if that was a standalone project for the aeration basin that would flow over $600,000, which includes contingencies. A little bit of electrical work, removal of the old equipment, and disposal, and installation of the new equipment that's an electrical work. So we're, look, we're looking at 300000 Another two, we got another 200000 possibly. That we hope to get a good deal, like I say, a better deal with a bigger project than one done right so, Mr. King. Thank you, Mayor. Um, so, now this aeration, is that uh, replacing the, the flywheel thing? No. Okay. So, yeah. 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 <laughs> we, we're actually on a second set time and then they're about 35 years old and we've got a basin that's just completely out of circuit because yeah. it's all over the place. Yeah. Any other discussion? District 1? Yes. District 2? Yes. District 3? District 3 votes, yes. District 4? Yes. District 5? Yes. District 6? Yes. District 7? Yes. District 8? Yes. And I vote yes, approval of uh, the motion passes. Thank you. Uh, moving to item C, approval of funds to relocate section of water line along Devil's Backbone Road relating to highway number 378 widening. Widening, this is in your packet. Do I have a motion? Motion for down and blue line. I'll second. Motion by Mr. Gambrell, second by Mr. Hall. Any discussion? District 1? Yes. District 2? Yes. District 3? District 3 votes, yes. District 4? Yes. District 5? Yes. District 6? Yes. District 7? Yes. District 8? Yes. And I have a yes, motion passes. Um, item D, approval of hospitality tax funds to repaint parking lines in both downtown districts. Um, as indicated in the packet, do I have a motion? So moved. Second. Ms. Shirley makes a motion. No. no. Oh, no. Sorry. Johnny Ms. Ms. Johnny May, sorry, I can't hear through the mask. Limit. Thank you. And the second was Mr. Gambrell. Yes. Thank you. Any discussion? I have a proposal that uh, Mr. Hall. We have twenty thousand uh, dollars already in the hospitality budget for events. The majority of those events have been canceled. My recommendation is that we simply. Um, give approval for the town manager to spend part of those funds on this project and not adjust the budget. Okay, that's part of the discussion. We want to withdraw the, does anyone want to withdraw their motion and Seems make like a new motion? Is that an amendment? Well, was that an well, amendment? You said proposal, is that an amendment? No, it, it's not an amendment. I don't think we need to nail it down to have the manager agree to. Uh, amendment to the motion. Amendment to the motion. Yep. Clarify motion. Yep. Clarification, yep. parliamentarian. But it's the person that made the motion. Okay. To take that except she can change her motion to do that. To use the money the way that it was proposed. Take the money from the events part of the budget and transfer it into the part of the budget. Accept that. I accept that. Okay. Any other discussion? District one? Yes. District two? Yes. District three? District three votes, yes. District four? Yes. District five? Yes. District six? Yes. District seven? Yes. District eight? Yes. And I vote yes. Motion passes. Um, item E, discussion regarding Shirley Street and Council District Three. I know Mr. Kane had requested this be on uh, this agenda. Mr. King, I'll give you the floor. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. 
Uh, Shirley Street, for folks who don't know, uh, is in my district. It's a street that we have um, quasi-maintained for, I don't know, 20 years. Um, there is a uh, right-of-way, uh, I think we have a right-of-way um, on that property. I know that there is some utility lines and some uh, storm drain. So, um, at some point, I would like to, uh, to discuss this at a uh, work session so we can get more into uh, the details about it. But the neighbors on that street have asked that the town uh, maintain it or have some type of relationship, formalized relationship with the town regarding that, uh, that property. Thank you, Mr. King. Anything else on this? Mr. Mayor, if I may. Mr. Hall. Uh, address Mr. King. Mr. King, where is Shirley Street actually physically located? It's off of uh, Howard Street. It's a street off of uh, Howard, just above uh, Maple Street, before you get to Pageant. Oh, no, that one. That one. Sorry. Thank you. Anything else on this item? When I think about that, Bob, I think about Barrett's Court, which was also uh, a very small uh, street in, in, I don't even know if the town really it's, owns it's, it. It's, yeah, it's partially owned by the town, part, partially owned by the town, partially owned by the county. It was right. kind of split. And, you see, uh, Shirley Street, I believe, Pat, is, there's some debate whether it is a private driveway or if it's a uh, uh, street. I mean, but we have utilities on there. We Basically, uh, since I've been on council, I know we've uh, maintained it with some brush and run and um, abated some flooding and, and, and whatnot. So just kind of formalizing the relationship there um, on, on Shirley Street. So at our next possible work session, we would definitely like to uh, be able to address that. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Kane. Item 10, manager report. Mr. Luckadoo. Got a number of things I want to hit on tonight. Um, September 30th was technically the deadline for census 2020, but what I'm noticing are their numbers are still changing daily. So I don't know if they're still proceeding forward. I would assume that they are, uh, despite their September 30th deadline. But those numbers are still changing, and the last reported numbers were as of the 8th on Friday. The national response is at 66.8%, South Carolina at 60.8%, Lexington County at 68.1%, uh, Saluda County is at 49.3%, and the town is at 59.4%. So we are um, just under 1% of the South Carolina average and, and right about 7% uh, under the national average here in town. Hopefully we still um, got some responses coming in from our area. But we are right about 8% less than what we were in 2010 uh, when we had 68%. So just a quick update on that. Uh, the next item, uh, last month reported on that, that we were trying to work with Lexington County CDBG staff to host a two information sessions regarding the minor home repair program and the comprehensive housing rehabilitation program that Lexington County offers uh, through their CDBG program. Uh, we are happy to report that this Thursday, October 15th, we're going to have two sessions here at Town Hall in the Council Chambers. The first one will be at 3 o'clock p.m. And the second one will be at 6 o'clock p.m. for those that, that may work and get off at 5 o'clock. Uh, Sandy Fox, who is over the CDBG department at the county, will be on hand to provide um, a presentation of those two programs 
and what they offer and the eligibility requirements. And um, she will also be here to answer any questions that people may have and further talk about the process and procedure of applying and going through this. Just as a quick note to anyone that may be in the room or may watch this video that, that may have interest, the Minor Home Repair Program offers uh, what you would call grant funds to owner-occupied residences of lower income people up to $13,999 uh, to go towards um, repairs to HVAC, window replacement, um, stairs that need to be repaired, and a number of different things that could be done to a house. Uh, we encourage anyone that, that qualifies or is interested or may know people interested to attend to get further information on this. A couple things about the upcoming November election. Um, just to remind everybody that the Leesville precinct will be held, uh, that voting location has been moved to Leesville United Methodist Church this year in their fellowship hall. And at the Leisure Center, normally for the Vicksburg Precinct, normally it's in the back of the building. They are moving that to the gymnasium to, to allow for more space while people are there voting. Uh, we did, just this past week, confirm uh, something with the county. We're gonna have three days of absentee voting, in-person absentee voting here at Town Hall. This is gonna take place October 19th, 20th, and 21st which will be a Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday next week. Um, you will have the ability to come up here on Monday to be between the hours of noon and 5 o'clock p.m. to do in-person absentee voting. And then on Tuesday and Wednesday next week, it'll be from 8 to 5 here in this location, the council chambers. They're going to have four machines available that day if someone needs to come. Like I'll tell you, I take back everything that I've ever said about you. <laughs> I appreciate it. appreciate that, Council. Mr. Lockerdo, Mr. Lockerdo, will that, in, will that include handicap access? Uh, I would assume that, did they specifically mention that? I would, would assume they, they would have curbside as they do with their other ones. They're going to have four machines, so I, I feel confident that they would have that ability to take one out. And it is Lexington. Yeah, election and county residents. still being run by residents. Residents. And yes, election and county residents. Okay. I do have one other question, Mayor. Yeah, Mr. Kane. Okay. So, um, Ted, can we get some um, literature out that we can take door to door and let folks know that this is uh, happening? Just give me some flyers. I'll see what we can get work up. I'll follow up with you on that tomorrow. We'll get with uh, Ms. Fox. Wait, which one is he talking about? You're talking about next week's Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday voting. absentee voting, correct? And yeah, and the information about the Methodist Church um, um, location, relocation, because I can guarantee you that my phone's going to blow up because the OE is closed. And that would be the old one. Right, I don't really want to deal with that. Okay. All right, moving on to the next item. Um, we have previously reported that we had uh, put in with for the SC CARES Act um, a reimbursement request of a little over $23,000. Um, today, the state has approved three separate components of our request, and we have received these funds, $11,014.59 in salary reimbursement, uh, $1,409.25 towards our telework capability and $1,729 that for the police department in PPE supplies and different things that they had to purchase. Those funds have been received today. We have already been approved but have not received $1,133.11 which is for other additional uh, cleaning supplies, PPE, gloves, masks, um, hand sanitizer, and other things like that for the rest of the town. We've been approved but have not received those funds back at this point. And we're still awaiting approval for $8,121.51, which is uh, the cost that we had accrued from January to the end of June for pay 
um, and medical leave related to COVID-19. So I will report on those and through the weekly report um, in next month's council meeting once those have been done. The next item, uh, if, if I know council should be very familiar with this, but for, for everyone else sitting in the room tonight, Lexington County is proposing uh, the possibility of implementing a stormwater utility fee countywide. Uh, they are going to be hosting a virtual meeting this Thursday from 10 to 12 p.m. With, in which they will discuss the proposed county stormwater utility fee. Um, as a reminder, we have submitted a number of stormwater uh, potential projects for this to the county. I am strongly encouraging um, each of you to take part in this virtual meeting. Uh, Ms. Armstrong did send out a fact sheet last week that each one of you should have received in your email. I looked back through and I believe I saw everybody's name in the email. Um, but be sure to check out that fact sheet. Um, I know that we as a staff will certainly be attending that. Uh, Lexington County is also, um, to piggyback on Mr. Taylor's report, and I won't go back through everything he said, but October 19th from 9 to 10 um, a.m. I put p.m. on here, but I doubt that's right. 9 to 10 a.m. on the 19th, um, we are in District 7. So if you go on that link on the county's website, we are District 7. Uh, you can sign up there to take part in this, this comprehensive planning virtual session that they are doing. I, I, we are signed up. Uh, we will be taking part, but I would encourage any of you that have the capability and, and the time to please sit in on this. Uh, the police department uh, roof recoding was performed last week. The crews were out there. It took them four days. They uh, started on Monday and had that complete on Thursday. So that recoding of the roof has been uh, completed, and I believe it got fully tested this past Sunday morning. Um, I was not in town, but my understanding is that um, roofs that generally don't leak could have possibly leaked this past Sunday morning based on what happened. But Chief did report uh, none of the previous leaks leaked through that event. So the roof should be good to go. Uh, the contractors for the Brody pump station, um, we've got that, a little bit of work left to be done with that. They should be on site sometime this week, no later than next week. Um, to finish that project up. We have received a check from Lexington County CDBG for $96,700 in reimbursement uh, towards that project that you will see reflected next one in the capital improvement impact the account. Uh, we hit, I put the wastewater treatment grant projects on here, but I think we get that with the floating aeration tonight. Our hope is to bid those two projects that we have for uh, the wastewater treatment plant on October 26th to put that out for a 30-day bid. And the last thing before we get into the monthly financial update, um, speaking on work sessions, our the FOB program, we've got the draft for the Fat Souls of Greece uh, program and um, recommended ordinance changes in our hands. We feel that it, it would be good to have an upcoming work session to have some of the engineering attend and actually go through those changes that they're recommending. Um, and even myself, what does it, the first questions I have is, what does this mean to our existing restaurants that we have? What does this mean to any new restaurants that are gonna come in in the future? Um, and any other manufacturing that, that it may affect? So we want them to have that opportunity to explain in detail what the impact of any of these changes would be. So that's something we're going to put together. Unfortunately, they are dealing with COVID-19 issues, and that is not something that we can uh, plan at this time until they kind of resolve um, the cases that they have. So. The last thing that I have is the monthly financial update. Uh, each of you have a copy in front of me. Um, our general fund checking ended the month at $1,464,000. Uh, dollars, our donate, police donations at 5155 that was unchanged from last month. 
Our fire department one percent. They did receive uh, their allotment and one percent funds for this year, so it was about a nine thousand uh, dollar increase in that to twenty six thousand six hundred twenty nine. Our municipal court remaining close to the same at $31,459 and our victim's assistant uh, remaining close to $1,359. Giving our total non-utility funds in the bank $1,528,995. Our utility uh, checking account ended the month at $240,621. Um, our reserve, just picking up on the interest um, in that account, is at $767,756. And our capital improvement impact fee account uh, ended the month at $1,517,168. And our USDA debt service reserve at $564,754. Uh, so the total of all utility funds ended the month at $3,090,306. And our hospitality checking account ended with an account balance of $806,007.87. Bringing in total funds for all town accounts at the end of the month of $5,425,309. Uh, the next page, as I've done each month, is just to kind of show a side-by-side -side comparison of the end of the month with the previous years just to kind of paint that picture of, of where we stand versus previous years at this point in the budget at this point of the year. And the last page, um, just looking at the general fund operating revenues and expenses, we have hit about 23% of our operating revenues through the first three months and we are sitting right at 23% for our operating expenses. On the utility fund, we have uh, brought in 26% in operating revenues and 18% in operating expenses. Um, through September for the victim's assistance, 24% revenues and 23% in operating expenses. And then for the hospitality tax fund, uh, through the first three months, we have brought in 31% of the revenue that we projected and we've spent 6% of our operational expenses. Mr. Kane. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. <coughs> Excuse me. Two things. One, what's the difference between a fee and a tax? Just curious. I do not have that definition of each in front of me to, okay. to explain that with Okay, so we're doing a, a stormwater feed, not a tax. Okay. All right. So the county, the county would be doing it instead of tax. That's a great question. All right. So, uh, budget wise, just relax. Don't. I would like to see what it would look like because we way out for our budget. I'd like to see what it looks like if we start each space break Leesville police officer at forty thousand dollars a year. Calm down, uh, old. <laughs> Somebody get old. I'd like to see what that looks like because that we have an issue with turnover. I'd like to see us have a minimum starting salary for our officers at forty thousand dollars a year and maybe kind of scale back a little bit. I think they'd be willing to have cars that run a little bit over 100,000 miles, have a little bit less toys for 40,000 uh, starting salary. I don't know where uh, Chief is with that, but I'd like to see what that looks like because I think that will um, stop a lot of turnover and I think you have a lot of um, better uh, community police and a lot of uh, buy-in from the community to the police and the police to the community. So I'm just throwing that out there. Don't nobody, don't ever really jump on me and what. We got enough time to take a look at it. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Mr. Mayor, if I may, I'm Mr. Hall, yes. address the manager. 
Uh, Mr. Lekadov, I have concerns about what's occurring with the bank and our interest rates. Uh, I understand we had a deal with them based on them meeting a proposal some year and a half ago from another banking institute, and they met that, which netted us. But give you an example, we made $285 a month on a $421,000 $421, in the uh, hospitality tax from a high of $320, $387 this last month we get we got $31.52 I believe council may need to address our financial uh, ordinance and give us some uh, leeway as to maybe uh, investing that money in savings bonds on a short-term basis 90 180 one-year bonds and, but, and part of that will be certainly touch base to see what we can do under statutory law there we are restricted in how we can invest um, and certain things that we can do so i would i would say that's something we can look at the statutory law have we checked to see what other banking institutes institutions are willing to do we have not at this point thank you thank you mr not do this time we have an executive session item to receive legal advice relating to contractual matter regarding the town hall roof do I have a motion to enter into executive session? So moved. Mr. Second. Prouse, second by Mr. Gambrell. Any discussion? District 1? Yes. District 2? Yes. District 3? Executive session, sir? Is it District 3? I, I'm not aware of any game that's on, sir. What, executive yes. session. Yes. Thank you. District 4? Yes. District 5? I guess I go in there with y'all. Okay, thank you. Is that District 6? Yes. District 7? Yes. District 8? Yes. And I have a, yes, we are in executive session. <laughs> At this time, I would entertain a motion to return to, uh, to regular council meeting. So moved. Second. And Mr. Gambrell in the second. Any discussion? District 1? Yes. District 2? Yes. District 3? Yes. District 4? Yes. District 5? Yes. District 6? Yes. District 7? Yes. District 8? Yes. And I vote yes. We are back in regular session. Um, possible actions by council to follow up executive sessions. Do I have, uh, this is uh, about the possible action relating to contractual matter regarding the town, town hall roof. Do I have a motion? Mr. Mayor. Ms. Levin. I motion to award the contract to Watson Associates for roof replacement on the town hall at 120 West Church Street, Suite A, for the price of $35,900. A motion by Miss Lundell, a second. Second. Second by Miss Lundell. Any discussion? District 1? Yes. District 2? Yes. District 3? District 3 goes I mean, yes. District 4? Yes. District 5? Yes. District 6? Yes. District 7? Yes. District 8? Yes. And I vote yes. The motion passes. Uh, item 13, potential agenda items for next month's meeting. Do I have any motion? Okay. Moving on. Well, agenda items for next month's meeting. Sorry, Mr. King. Yeah. All right, moving to item 14, do I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Mr. Gambrell, second by Ms. Etheridge. Any discussion? District 1? Yes. District 2? Yes. District 3? Yes. District 4? Yes. District 5? Of course. District 6? <laughs> District 7? Yes. District 8? Yes. And I vote yes, and we are adjourned. Thank you. <laughs>